Did Greg Popovich cost the Spurs a championship? I fear he has. I fear he has. I hope, uh, you know, I don't want to say I hope I'm wrong because I'm certainly not going to be depressed if Miami wins game seven, even though I did pick the Spurs in this game seven, and I'm going to stick to that. I'm going to go down with the ship. I'm going to go down with the courage of my convictions as my as my partner in crime on here first take so eloquently mm -hmm. states on numerous occasions. Mm -hmm. But I will say this. It's very, very difficult for me because I, I, I am a fan. I, I, I'm not a fan of too many people. I'm a fan of Greg Popovich. I have profound respect for this man, and I know that he's an elite coach. None of us are infallible. All of us have flaws, and obviously Greg Popovich is human, so it applies to him as well. I just never believed in my wildest dreams I would see it occur so conspicuously in an NBA Finals when you are literally 28 seconds removed from an NBA World Championship. But that's what happened. We got a guy like Tim Duncan who finishes with 30 points, 17 rebounds. He plays 44 minutes and 26 seconds. In that time span, ladies and gentlemen, this man had two fouls. Wasn't in foul trouble or anything like that. You yank him from the game with 28 seconds yeah. left, and Miami grabs two, not one, but two offensive rebounds. I think it's a safe bet to say that if Tim Duncan had 17 rebounds last night, there's a chance that it probably would have been 18 or 19. All right? That's number one. You take it and you sit there and you substitute for Tony Parker, who, by the way, I totally understood this to some degree because he did not walk to the bench and sat down. He collapsed. He was exhausted. He logged how many minutes? 42 minutes, 39 seconds. Skip, not a single turnover in 42 minutes yep. and 39 seconds. But why are those? Why is that turnover category so prevalent and pivotal in this particular conversation? Because the time that you took Tony Parker out in what was it, the last 79 seconds of the game, that was when Manu Ginobili committed two of the, uh, of his eight turnovers. Okay, now, now so, one shouldn't have been because we both agreed that Ray fouled yeah, 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 him. Yeah, yeah, he what, got a turnover yeah, yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah, but I understand that. But what I'm saying to you is that there was nothing going Manu's way. Mm -hmm. So when there's nothing going your way and you're a veteran, there are things that you have to know better than doing because you're not getting the benefit of the doubt. Manu Ginobili has struggled, like I told you, to create separation off the dribble. He struggled to do the things we've customarily known Manu Ginobili to, to do throughout a somewhat illustrious career. I consider three championships to be, at the very least, somewhat illustrious. So if you're not yourself, and you're not as productive as you're accustomed to being, and you've spent the previous 46, I mean, in your, your playing time, because you only had 34 minutes, but you spent the previous 46 minutes of the game yeah. not being able to do anything effectively, what on earth would make you think that you're going to get that call on the road in an NBA Finals with Miami crawling, literally crawl, crawling back into the game? You're not getting those calls. So the combination of Tim Duncan with the Manu Ginobili turnovers, with the fact that you left Manu Ginobili in the game for as long as you did to make up to to be in as, as inept as he was, to me, was some very, very egregious mistakes on a part of Greg Popovich. And I fear that San Antonio is not going to have enough for Game 7 because of it. That's what I feel. I have no issue with anything Pop did last night. And I have been critical of him before mm -hmm. on this show, not off last night. I disagree with every point you made. Mm -hmm. I must admit, I was getting antsy when he rested Duncan and Parker to start the fourth quarter. And all of a sudden, Chalmers goes boom and Mike Miller goes boom. And that 10-point lead went down to four just like that. And I'm like, for me, you know, just me, if I'm sitting there, I I'm, I'm going to put my two studs back in. But as you point out, they're both gas, man. This is how he plays the game. This is, he's doing business as usual. I'm going to try to rest them for the first three or four minutes of the fourth quarter. Now, back to, to Duncan down the stretch. It was clear that Miami was going to have to put in its snipers to make a three-point shot, right? So I have no problem with pulling Duncan and putting an extra better defender on the perimeter. That just makes sense to me. But you got two bad bounces off the misses. You got big high bounces. Bosch got one. The other one, Kawhi and, and uh, Boris Diaw were fighting for it. Go look, look if you see the tape. They're, they're, they're both fighting for it, and they knock each other off the ball. Would Duncan have gotten that one? I, I don't know. Would he have gotten the Bosch rebound? It bounced so far out of the lane that Bosch was in perfect position, and he is 6'11". I'm not sure Duncan would have gotten that rebound. Well, so my point is, remember, 
Pop, remember the game at Golden State that they won? Pop benched Tim Duncan for the last eight minutes of the game and went with his smaller lineup. Okay? Well, that's what he does. Well, well yeah, yeah. I, but my retort to that, Skip, is simple on a couple of levels. Number one, these are the Miami Heat. These are not the Golden State Warriors. Golden State's pension, its habit, its addiction is perimeter shooting. Okay. Miami, you had LeBron James attacking the rim the entire fourth quarter. And you have a six foot 11 dude who can step away from the basket, but who's tall enough to grab some rebounds. That's point number one. Point number two, when you have a big boy down low, it allows you as perimeter players to take more chances, to get up in people because you know you're covered on the backside. When you don't have that, then all of a sudden you're a bit more cautious in terms of staying in front of your man because you can't take those risks because you have no backside help. And that's what you had. So even though, I mean, far be it for me to sit there and literally question, I'm not, I mean, I understand this man is great sure. and it usually works for him. So, but, but what I'm saying is, if you you look at the way things are going, and this is the last point, and perhaps the most emphatic point. You've watched Tim Duncan a lot over the years. So have I. We've seen him win. We've seen him lose. He is class personified, and there was nothing different last night. But I ask you this question, Skip Bayless. Have you ever seen him more upset? Mm -hmm. Have you ever nope. seen the look in that post-game conference? When you look at Tim Duncan, and this is as close as you're going to get to something controversial coming out of his mouth about the father figure that he has in Greg Popovich. Yep. He said, we lost the game. I don't know why. I don't know why. I mean, he was, I mean, it, you talk about a brother, talk about a brother in desperate need of some chapstick. This dude was biting his lip, biting his tongue, biting everything surrounding his mouth because <laughs> you know he wanted to go off because he's like, yo, what on earth happened here? He knows he had no business out of that game. He knows he had, they had no business losing that game. He knows that different decisions should have been made. And this is the same Greg Popovich before anybody wants to sit out there and just act like it can't be questioned. This is the same Greg Popovich last year where Tony Parker looked at him. He said, Pop, I'm 29 years old. I haven't played yeah, in that, three that weeks. Was joking. No, it was no, 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 like, no, 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 no. He wasn't joking. Well, but I, mean, it, it, I mean, it wasn't big deal. Yeah. It, was, it was a regular season game. Yeah. But what he's saying is, look, coach, I love you. Yeah. And you're great, but you ain't always right. Mm. This is one of those situations mm -hmm. where, Pop, you ain't always right.